Thank you for 10,000 subscribers. I appreciate you all watching. You had some questions about me. I got the answers. Stanley Costello asked, how long is it going to be when you're through with your studies? I'm currently finishing my second studies. So conducting, I did flute before. This is my last semester. I'm probably gonna do a masters after it. So about two years. Kai asked, what do you think as a conductor is the role of the bassoon in the orchestra? The usage of the bassoon and what it means in the orchestra has changed quite a lot. Before it was more of a harmony instrument, but I guess since Wagner this changed, there are a lot of solo parts. Take the Sacra from Stravinsky with the famous opening in the bassoon. But in general still, I think most of the time it has more of a harmonic function. A bit like the cellos, but without so much solos. Are there any pieces where you would think that the bassoon could have taken the role of another instrument and maybe would have performed better at it? I'm not sure. Every composer has its own style and because of that you can recognize every composer. So if Mozart would have composed a bit more like Ravel and used the bassoon differently, I don't know if it would be Mozart anymore. I cannot say if it would be worse, if it would be better, but it certainly wouldn't be Mozart anymore. So it's a bit difficult to go back in retrospective and say, they should have used another instrument because it would have not been congruent with the style of whatever composer we're talking about. What was the most difficult thing entering the music industry? I'm not exactly sure. I've been in the music industry my entire life because my parents are both musicians. Probably the one thing that I would like to have learned earlier is that it does matter how good you are, but it also matters quite a lot who you know. So having the right context is probably as important as being a good musician. But just relying on context also doesn't work. The next question, do you actually have a brother? Yes, I do. You could have seen him in the Beethoven parody. There was a short scene with him. The next question is from Nate Brindley. What made you decide to start YouTube? I guess two things. First of all, I like to watch videos, so I just wanted to be able to make them by myself. I wanted to learn how this works. It took me just around two and a half years to get, let's say, decently good at it, I guess so. And the second thing, I thought it would be a pretty cool idea to make money with it. And I thought there was a lot of potential to earn quite a lot of money because you basically have unlimited scale and you can reach so many people. And also it's pretty cool to have the influence and talk about classical music, something that I very much enjoy. The next question is from someone unknown. <laughs> Do you listen to different genres besides classical? If so, what's your favorite song? Yes, of course, I do listen to different genres. I listen to very much film music, although I consider this basically classical music, so I don't think this was the point of the question. But I do also listen to a lot of pop music. Probably I do listen to more pop music than classical music because I'm doing a lot of classical music throughout my day. I do not have a favorite song. My taste is very diverse in terms of pop music. I listen to pretty much anything you can imagine, so that's that. Next question, Bardia Gorureshi, Gorureshi. What is your suggestion for a newcomer to classical music, symphonic classical music, to be specific? I would start with Tchaikovsky symphonies, five and six. They're pretty easy to get into. Probably Symphony Fantastique, Dvorak's Ninth. Everyone loves Dvorak's Ninth. It's a great symphony. Probably those four, I would start with them. And one important tip, do not try to listen to whole symphonies all the time. Take shorter parts re-listen them a few times because the first time listening to something you will not be able to get everything out of the music you will not remember anything and re-listening really helps to enjoy the music always when i go to concerts i listen to the music before i go there so that i can enjoy them more when i'm in the concert the next questions are from owen tips on speeding fast pieces practice slow that's that's the only trick there is top 10 symphonies tchaikovsky 5 6 symphony fantastique Dvorak 8, Dvorak 9, Mahler 7, Mahler 3. I probably will forget some very important ones. Bruckner 7, Bruckner 4. Was heißt denn noch sonst immer gern? And the 10th one, Mahler 6 or Mahler 9 or both. Most important conducting tip. First of all, do not conduct tempo, conduct music. So what I mean by that, do not do this. Do not accentuate every beat. Conduct something more like, that is a bit more like a flow, like the phrasing of the music. And never go up too fast after the three. So the four shouldn't be too fast. A bit more steady in terms of tempo. Best composer to listen to while doing work. Don't listen to music while you're working. That's not efficient. But if you want to, I would recommend the Mission Impossible film music soundtrack from the sixth and the seventh movie incredible music. I do sometimes listen to those soundtracks when I'm working, especially in libraries when people are too loud. They are amazing and they have like so much drive forward that I push you to work very hard. 
Next question is from Ryan Thompson. What's your favorite obscure music theory concept? The further two chords are away in the circle of fifth, the cooler it sounds if you put them right next to each other. Because they actually do not fit together and this creates some kind of drama and tension. Jamie Pike asks, what is your favorite Mahler symphony? Probably number seven, but it changes from time to time. I also very much like three, six and nine, probably seven. The next questions are from Walter Wang. How does it feel to have an entire orchestra staring at you during a piece? It's definitely scary. You, especially during performances, you have to be extremely concentrated and hyper-focused also during rehearsals because you have to check basically everything simultaneously and keep everything together. And if you have a piece that can break out something that's very difficult, you have to be hyper-focused. But that's sometimes the good part because you cannot be very much nervous because you're so focused. And that's also something that I learned when you actually try to make just music and like be super focused on making the best music, you naturally are not that nervous because you have too much to think about. There's too much to think, too much to do in the music so that you cannot be bothered by, oh, I'm nervous. Like, this shouldn't come up, this thought. Of course it does, but you're getting my point. You should focus on the music when playing. How does a conductor read so many lines at once? By starting to read them very slowly, bar by bar. So you have, take the first bar, you read all, I don't know, maybe 16 lines every beat for beat. So it's just a very tedious process and when you do this very, very often at some points you basically know every instrument by heart. I'm not saying by heart, but you know what most instruments are playing. And for the most part, if you have just strings and maybe some one, two other instruments, it's, it's not that difficult to read. You can do it. With time you get better at it and it really helps to think in harmonies. So I don't think just notes. If I see a chord in the strings and it's A, C, E and maybe again, I don't know, A, I know instantly it's A major and I don't think, oh, it's three different notes. No, I, I know it's A major and I also feel this in my hands. And of course you learn, if you don't know this, you learn scores at the piano so you also can play them. So when you're in front of the orchestra, you also have this feeling in your hands what harmonies you actually play. And this is super beneficial. By the way, congrats on 10,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. The next question is from Boteanu Tudor. If you had the ability to time travel to the past, and meet any composer, conductor, pianist, etc. Who would it be and why? Probably Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky is my favorite composer. We'll probably want to talk a bit about The Nutcracker, how he came up with just incredible music for two hours straight. I don't know how people do this. Probably would have asked him something about that, how he came up with the melodies and just this perfect piece from start to finish. The Eternal Paradox asks, do a pianist's point of view of every other instrument. That's easy. They all suck. Piano is great. Everything else sucks. Ray Skywalker asks, congrats on 10,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. How did making YouTube videos help you grow as a musician and in your music career? It definitely helped me because I had to go back to the stuff that I learned by myself and try to teach it by myself, try to formulate it and structure it into a concise video. And it definitely helped me to learn the things even better that I have learned by myself. In terms of career, I don't think it has benefited me yet, but I've got a small name now and I can build from that. I'm Lopez asked a lot of questions, here they are. What instruments do you play and at what age you joined the music world? My parents, as I said before, they both studied music, they are both musicians. So my entire life, I went to rehearsals with my father when I was a child, got early music education, however you call this. I have started to play the flute with seven, then with eight I started the violin. For a few years doing Basically my entire life I also had piano lessons, not consistently, but definitely since like one year before I was studying the flutes because you have to play piano at the entry audition for every instrument. So I've done this my entire life and I've been in this world since my childhood. Does your job keep you stable like it lets you pay things easily? No, and I don't know if it will, but I have to say right now I'm a student and I'm not trying to make money. I'm here to learn first of all and then, then we'll see. How to organize myself financially for college? If you're in America, I guess you have a big problem because it's very expensive. In Germany, studying is very cheap. Yes, you have to pay accommodation and of course can be quite pricey, but the tuition fees are 50 bucks per month. So it's, it's basically for free. How much is the college and master's degree? It depends on the country. In Germany, as I said before, it's very cheap. In America, probably very expensive. So I don't know. What subjects do you had while you were at the conducting course? I guess you mean studying conducting. Of course, you had the main lessons, theory, harmony, e-training, all this basic stuff, counterpoint, 
everything that you would normally expect in a music education. It's pretty similar compared to other instruments, what you have to do. Is the course hard? Yes, it kind of is, but if you have some previous experience in playing piano, music theory, reading notes, it's possible to get in quite fast, but it will still take you a few years to get, let's say, proficient at it. The next question from, I'm sorry, but I don't know. For how many orchestras do you work and how do you handle the time to work for them? I do not work for an orchestra right now. I have some projects here and there, but I have no orchestra that I conduct every week. The projects that are coming up, I try to plan long term and I start very early learning the repertoire so I don't have to rush anything at the end. Anon Wharton asks, do you believe chord progression or melody to be more important in composition? Both. It's, it's a combination of both that together creates something amazing. Nick Yogunant has also a lot of questions. Can you make another video where you approach strangers on the street and quiz them with classical music? No, that's super uncomfortable. German people don't very much like that and they also do not classical music. Sorry. Are you still planning on hosting that music competition? And if so, when? Yes, that will definitely happen, I promise. It will probably go down beginning of August. I will let you guys know soon enough. Why do you think Bach is the greatest composer? First of all, the level of mastery Bach achieved is not reached by any other composer, not even close. And the second thing is, every composer, when they wanted to learn music, they went back to Bach. Every composer, basically. So Bach must be the greatest. How well do you play piano? I've seen a video of you play a part of Chopin Blood number one and was very impressed. Sorry to tell you, I'm very mediocre. I think now I could learn the Chopin Ballade, but I would still not be able to play it very well. I'm not a pianist. I can play very complicated piano reductions and scores, that's no problem. But I'm very much not proficient at playing piano. So if you've got like six or seven years of piano experience, you will definitely play better than me. Hi Carl, thanks for the inspiring content. Thank you. My question is, why did you delete one of your videos titled What Your Favorite Symphony Says About You? It's a long time ago that I made those videos. And I don't think they're representable of my channel anymore or what I want the channel to be. I want this channel more to be like educational so that people can actually learn something. And if I want to make the occasional comedy video, I want it to be more cinematic and have more sense of artistry behind it, less something like a meme. For example, the Beethoven director parody, even if it didn't get very much views, I learned a lot about making videos. It was quite fun to make and it was just a passion project, not something that I've done for views or because I had not that much time and I had to, to rush something out. Even if I have to say those, what your favorite composer videos, they take very much time to make. Like the editing, especially all those music tracks that those transitions work very well. It took quite some time. To sum up, they are not representable of this channel anymore and what I want it to be in the future. Violenta Mente Pacifico asked, best pianist who is active? In my opinion, Christian Zimmermann. I've listened to him once in Luxembourg, probably the best concert I've ever been to really made me think about life, starting to believe in God more and more. And it was just amazing, truly amazing. Can you give me some advice for writing my piece? Unfortunately, I'm not very competent in writing music, but I know someone who is, so if you would like to have this contact information, you can hit me up with an email and I give you his email and you can contact him and maybe work with him. Anonymous asked, Ravel or Debussy, why? I'm a Ravel type of guy. I prefer the harmonies, the chords used in Ravel. I think it's more tangible. I can see more and I just love those pieces like Gaspard de la Nuit, Daphne C. Chloe, Ma Mère Loire, Vals Noble Sentimental. Very, very big Ravel fan. DBC is awesome as well. Fantastic composer. But for me, most of the time it's too vague. I prefer having a bit more of a clear image to see with Ravel. Tom Hagel asked, what did you exactly study? I studied flute, four years, normal bachelor of music. And now I'm studying conducting. And as I said before, I'm going to finish it this semester. What are some underrated symphonists? I guess you mean symphonies. I don't know if there's any underrated symphony that I can mention, but Dvorak 8, not Dvorak 9, is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Maybe even as great as the ninth one. Mendelssohn Lobgesang, I think it's the second symphony. That one is great. Symphony Fantastique, if you don't know it, if you're watching my channel, I've talked about this very often. There probably will be a lot of people who say something like Cesar Franck symphonies or Sibelius, but I don't know much of them. Maybe Mahler 7 is also considered one of those. It depends on who you're asking. Maybe if you ask a pianist, they don't like symphonies at all and they don't like long Bruckner symphonies. I love them. Maybe for someone else, they're underrated. For me, of course, they're not underrated. Xing Ming Li asks, why does Krieg suck? I don't think he sucks at all. I love his piano sonatas number seven. Great piece of music. So, Greek, no, great composer. Thank you again for 10,000 subscribers.
I'm deeply grateful for each and every one of you watching the videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and we see each other in the next one.